Number 52. A compound with a molar mass of about 42 grams per mole contains 85.7 carbon and 14.3% hydrogen by mass. Write the Lewis structure for a molecule of the compound. Okay, so we did a very similar problem like this in the last question. Um, now, this one might be confusing because we actually haven't done any um, percent compositions thus far in the Adams First textbook. They probably uh, kept this question in when they were transferring over textbooks, but have no fear, Christina is here. So I will show you the guidelines. Now, when we're doing percent compositions, there's a crazy roadmap that I like to put out there for you guys. So you guys should memorize it. You could always go from a percent of something to grams of something of that element in which you can then go to moles, which then you can nicely get a mole ratio. And from there, you can get the empirical formula, which then we can get the molecular formula. So as of right now, they gave us percents. So we're all the way over here. And they gave us a molar mass, which comes from a molecular formula. So we got to go all the way over here. So in this case, it's a five-step problem. This one will be very short. Uh, we did number 51, which one, which is just like this. So I'll speed up the process for you guys here. Just know that to go from a percent to grams, we assume that if it was 100%, we used a 100 gram sample. So that means that the percent should equal the grams. So if we were given 85.7% of carbon and 14.3% of hydrogen, we could say that this was 85.7 grams of carbon and this is 14.3 grams of hydrogen. So now we're at the gram stage, that was easy. Now we have to get to moles. Well, we know how to go from grams to moles of something. We did those conversions before, right? We need to use the periodic table. And remember, one mole of anything always equals the molar mass in grams of that compound. So if you guys don't remember how to do your conversions, go back. I think it was chapter two that we did it towards the end. There's tons of questions for you guys there. So I'm going to times by a ratio. Grams of carbon goes on the bottom because that's what I don't want here. And moles of carbon goes up on the top. And you got to look at the periodic table. Here's carbon. And it looks like there's 12.01. That's the mass for carbon. And it's always going to be for one mole. So one mole of carbon equals 12 grams. That's how we cr cross off the grams. And now I like to do these concurrently. So I'll do every step for um each atom at the same time, it will work out better in the end. So grams of hydrogen on the bottom, mole of hydrogen up top, do the same thing as you did before. Hydrogen has a mass of 1.008. You could just, you know, say one if you want, but I will put the 1.008 and that's for one mole, right? So that cancels out the gram of hydrogen. So now let's just do the math. So in this case, we'll do 85.7 divided by 12, and let me just put 12.01 because that's what the periodic table says. But if you do 12, I mean, that's fine. So I will say that this is 7.14 moles of carbon. And then if I do the bottom, I think you get 14.2. Um, yep, 14.2. Okay, and that's for hydrogen. Now, we're at this stage. We got to go from moles of something to a mole ratio. Now, how do I do that? Well, you always will just divide by your lowest number of moles for the entire sample. So look at your mole values. You have 7.14 moles of carbon and 14.2 moles of hydrogen. Whichever one is the lower number, that's the one that you will divide through all of your atoms. So in this case, 7.14 is the lowest. So I'll just divide each one by 7.14, 7.14. And if you had three atoms, you would do this for all three of them. So it doesn't matter how many you have. Now this turns out to be one mole of carbon. And this turns out to be roughly two moles of hydrogen. At this stage of the game, at your mole ratio stage, 
you really want to get whole numbers. So if you have like 1.998, you will round it to two. And I think that's what happened, happened with this one. Okay. So now we have those mole ratios, so we can easily turn it into an empirical formula by just putting the compound together. So in this case, I have one carbon and two hydrogens, so it would be CH2, and that's my empirical formula. But now I need to match it with what they gave me here. I need to find a formula in which that has a molar mass of 42. How am I going to do that? The next stage from going from an empirical formula to a molecular formula, and remember an empirical formula is the most simplified. Molecular formulas are always, could always be broken down. Now, how do we do that? We always take our molecular mass or molar mass, it all means the same thing, and you have to divide it by your empirical mass. I'll just put EM for short. So they told us our molecular mass, which was 42, so 42 grams per mole. But now we just have to divide that by our empirical mass. And we've learned how to um, find out, you know, masses for compounds. In this case, ours is CH2. So you'll just add together one carbon and two hydrogens. So I'm just going to do that quick. So 12.01 plus 2 times 1.008. You get roughly 14 say 14.03 grams per mole and now you will just divide the two and this stage of the game also you should get a whole number as well so 14 divided by four uh, sorry 42 divided by 14.03 you get 2.99 but that's roughly three now what does this mean when you're at this stage this number will tell you how many times more your empiric well your molecular formula is from your empirical formula. So all you got to do is just take this empirical formula, the CH2, and just times all the subscripts by 3 in this case. So if my empirical formula was CH2, I'm going to take this 3 and times it by each subscript. There is one carbon here and there's two hydrogens here. So all I do is just times it by three. So now my molecular formula is C3H6. So that's it for this one, C3H6. Now we just have to write the Lewis structure. Now for this one, they don't specifically um, give me any guidelines as to write C3H6, but we can just write a Lewis structure and whichever one that works theoretically will be the right answer. So in this case, remember that hydrogen can never be in the middle. It has to be surrounded by carbon. So I'm going to put maybe, I'll put the three carbons in the middle, and now I have to divvy up the six hydrogen between the three carbons. So Maybe I can, let's see, if I put three hydrogens here, one, two, three, that's three more to play with, and maybe I'll put one up top here, so that's four, and then, I don't know, five and six. Now, you will, you know, use your own judgment and try to see what works. So your compound may be different from mine, but if it works and it follows the octet rule, it is perfectly acceptable answer. But I'm going to keep it like this. So that's my blueprint, right? That's how we write blueprints for the atoms. Now, let's draw the valence electrons around each atom. Each hydrogen has one valence electron, so I'm going to draw one dot. And I know that because hydrogen has one valence, and carbon has four valence electrons, so I need to draw out four. So let's see, for each carbon there should be four dots. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then one, two, three, four. Okay, so let's bind now. And we all get only single bonds and then we check. So this has a single bond, single bond, single bond and single bond. Now remember, Hydrogen only wants to have two electrons when bound. So all of these hydrogens will have the two electrons. A single bond represents two electrons. So all of these are perfect. 
But now let's see. This carbon has two, four, six, eight electrons. That's the octet. Octet means that they want to have eight when they're done with binding. Let's look at this carbon. Two, four, six, seven. Uh-oh, that's not good. And this carbon has two, four, six, seven. So it looks like both of them need a little help, but there's a lone electron here, which I could bring over here. And there's a lone electron here that I could bring over here. Looks like they could form a bond. Look at that. And now this carbon has two, four, six, eight electrons. And this carbon also has two, four, six, eight. And there you go. So this would be the compound, the Lewis structure for this molecule. And this is done. 52 is done. So this one was a little bit more complex. We had to not divvy these up um, equally with, you know, two hydrogens, two hydrogens, and two hydrogens. It's actually a asymmetrical drawing over here where you had three hydrogens here, one, and then two. All right. So thanks for tuning in. Hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching. Thank you for coming here to get your chemistry help. I love helping you guys out. Um, so yeah, have an awesome day. Keep studying hard. And I'll see you guys all in the next question. Bye-bye.